and gentlemen, it is now 10.02 on the 3rd of June, 2020. My name is Chuck Arneson. I'd like to call the virtual meeting of the Virginia Soil and Water Conservation Board to order. As you are aware, our scheduled meetings for March, April, and May were canceled due to the COVID-19 restrictions. Generally, public bodies are prohibited from meeting electronically under the provisions of the Freedom of Information Act, known as FOIA. However, emergency language approved by the governor and General Assembly in April allows us to move forward with certain restrictions that I will outline. Before I review those provisions, please let me take a moment to tell you how this meeting will work. I want to allow for participation by board members, members of the public wish to comment. However, it is essential that we are able to manage the conversation effectively. I am chairing this meeting today from the offices of the Association of Soil and Water Conservation District in Annexville, Virginia. I have with me Scott Linton, Michael Fisher, and Dr. Kendall, Kendall Tyree. This will, they will assist with responding to comments and the overall presentation of the meeting. Please be patient with us as we work through this. Understand and appreciate the challenges. Chapter 1283 of the 2020 Acts of Assembly, as known as the Boost Bill, includes language addressing the abilities of bodies to conduct electronic meetings without the need for a quorum being present in a single physical location, known as an electronic meeting. This language was submitted as an amendment by the governor and by the General Assembly at their April 2020, April 22nd, 2020. Con convened session. The governor subsequently signed the bill and the bill was effective as of April 24, 2020. The caboose bill allows to hold meetings when the governor has declared a state of emergency pursuant to Virginia Code 44-140.17. The nature of the declared emergency makes it impractical or unsafe for the public body or board to assemble in a single location. And the purpose of the meeting is to discuss and transact business thoroughly required, necessary to continue operations of the public and the discharge of its lawful purpose, duties, and responsibilities. Section 4-0.01 Gulf. The caboose bill also has language regarding recordings and transcriptions of electronic meetings. Please be advised that this meeting is recorded. This recording will be available to the public through the DCR website. The comments in the chat room will also be public reference. The minutes of this meeting will be drafted and posted in accordance with regular procedures. The caboose bill does not allow the board to hold an electronic meeting, discuss or transact business for any purpose. Rather, do so as long as the agenda items that the public body take up are a statutorily required or b necessary to continue operations and discharge lawful purpose duties and responsibilities. You will know that the original agenda was amended to comply with this language. It is the board's responsibility to determine whether the nature of the declared emergency makes it impractical or unsafe for the public body or governing board to assemble in a single location. At the conclusion of my remarks, I ask for a motion from the board to make this determination. That fails at that point. It will require compliance with provisions of Virginia Code 2.2-37.8.2. Therefore, in accordance with Delta.2, public bodies must include a telephone number that may be used to notify the public body of any interruption in telephonic or video broadcast of the meeting. In the event that a disruption occurs, participants should contact Mr. Fletcher by phone or text at 804-317-8934. 
that number will be appear in the chat box. Additionally, there is, if there is an interruption in the broadcast, the meeting will be suspended until public access is restored. Those provisions of the Virginia Freedom of Information Act not addressed by the caboose bill remain in effect. Before we continue with the business portion of the meeting, I will ask Mr. Fletcher to call the roll for the board members and anticipate that. Other participants will be recorded through the chat window. If you are participating by phone and your name is not called, please call or text Mr. Fletcher at 804-317-8934. In addition, if at any time you lose connection or are unable to reconnect, please contact Mr. Fletcher at the same number. I will now turn to Mr. Fletcher to call the roll. Mr. Arneson? Here. Mr. Wilson? Here. Okay. Uh, Mr. Albritton? Albritton. Ms. Saki Blanc? Good morning. I'm here. Mr. Coiner? Mr. Coiner is trying to connect. having difficulty with that out. Ms. Mabel? Mr. Newton. Present. Ms. O'Brien. Present. Ms. Smith. Present. Present. I, I am only calling the names of the staff members who will be presenting. Otherwise, uh, I can see you in the chat. Or you can text me to let you know in attendance. Uh, Director Chrisman. I am present. Mr. Baxter. Present. Ms. Howard Cooper? Present. Ms. Watlington? Here. And that's it. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Michael. Okay. The way we're going to do it, every motion I will read and then I will ask a member of the board to move and a second. So unmute. When you uh, when the motion is, if you choose to move it or second it, and then remute. Then after the motion is read and if the discussion, if there's no discussion, we will call the roll. And if you're for the motion, it's yes. If you're against the motion, it's no. The motion is the Virginia Soil and Water Conservation Board certifies that the nature of the declared COVID-19 emergency makes it impractical or unsafe for the board to assemble in a single location, and further, that agenda items to be taken up at this meeting are necessary to continue operations and discharge lawful purposes, duties, and responsibilities of the board. Do I have a motion? So moved, Adam Wilson. Thank you. Second it, Kristen Saki Blanc. Thank you. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, I'll ask. Michael, to call the roll. Mr. Arneson. Yes. Mr. Wilson. Yes. Ms. Hecky Blunt. Yes. Mr. Coiner is still trying to connect. Uh, Ms. Mabry is on the phone. Yes. Uh, Mr. Newton? Yes. Dr. O'Brien? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Yes. Remember the motion carries. Thank you. I want to explain further how we will handle participation by board members, staff, and the public. Everyone except the individual presenting materials for an agenda item will be muted. Once the presentation is completed, the board members and only the board members will be unmuted for discussion. Michael, Christine, and Kendall will assist me with the ensuring board members are recognized when they have questions or comments. As needed, staff will be unmuted to address questions and concerns. Members of the public will be able to ask questions and provide input by utilizing the chat box function only. 
As time allows, we will respond to those questions and comments. We will now proceed with the business of the board as outlined in the agenda. The first agenda item that I have is the approval of the minutes of the December 23rd, 200, 2019 meeting. Is there a motion to accept? Adam Wilson, motion to approve. Is there a second? Daley O'Brien, second. Thank you. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, I will ask Michael to call the roll. Yes for approved, no for not. Mr. Arneson? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Jackie Blunt? Yes. Mayberry? Yes. Newton? Yes. Dr. O'Brien? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Chairman, the motion carries. Thank you very much. I will now hear from Clyde, the, the director's report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and good morning to all. This is a rather fascinating because we are making pictures and getting some feedback here. Let's try that again. Mr. Chairman, can you hear me now? Yes. Okay, great. Uh, so, as I was saying, we're making history here today in the fact that this is the first uh, DCR board uh, meeting using this new emergency le legislation that the General Assembly and the Governor approved to allow this. And I uh, appreciate, Mr. Chairman, you uh, giving us that appropriate guidance. I do also want to recognize that Ms. Gray O'Dwyer, our counsel with the Attorney General's office, is on the call. Good morning, Gray. And um, should we have any uh, questions or concerns as we move through this, um, please uh, please feel free to ask council questions as we are in uh, uncharted waters here. Um, and also, uh, Ms. O'Dwyer, I would also ask for you to chime in, particularly if you could uh, maybe jump in on the chat, if at any point in time any uh, element of the meeting is not following the requirements of the statute. I would also note that there are certain things that we normally would include in a board meeting that are not on your agenda today, uh, such as partner reports and those kinds of things. As Mr. Uh, Chairman alluded to, the, the emergency legislation requires that we are only con discussing those items that are either statutorily required, and as you all know, this board has very uh, important statutorily uh, directed uh, requirements, as well as are required for the continued operation of our most important uh, uh, programs between dam safety, floodplain management, as well as the um, agricultural best management practices and other soil and water conservation rate related um, uh, opportunities. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, um, I want to just start out by mentioning a couple important pieces of legislation that the General Assembly passed that have now been signed into law that. Uh, uh, one is uh, somewhat more informational, um, but uh, is something that this board certainly been supportive of, and that was related to dam safety in House Bill 1569, Senate Bill 343. Um, this legislation uh, was originally proposed by the department in the previous General Assembly session, the 2019 session, ended up getting referred to the Housing Commission. And there uh, were two versions. The Senate version actually came out of the Housing Commission, which uh, really good uh, news is that the Housing Commission of the General Assembly became very interested in dam safety, as it, particularly as it relates to homeowners. Um, and so what these two pieces of legislation do is they now require by law that um, including the owning of an impounding structure is part of the real estate buyer beware provisions um, when folks are, are buying a property and basically advises people, um, you know, if there is an impounding structure, either through a homeowner's association or the individual property itself, that they should uh, take certain actions to make sure 
that that dam is uh, that they know what they're buying when they buy the property that either owns the dam or is part of a homeowners association that owns the dam. So again, we're very pleased with this legislation uh, and feel that it's an important step in the right direction. Um, the other one I want to mention actually creates some work for the board, and I'll get to that at the end of this. But um, the Chesapeake Bay TMDL implementation bill, House Bill 1422 in the companion Senate Bill 704, uh, known as the Bay Bill. And basically what this says is that if Virginia does not meet its agricultural goals as set out in the Chesapeake Bay Phase 3 uh, Watershed Implementation Plan uh, by July 1 of 2026, then these, this legislation will become effective that will require nutrient management plans be maintained and implemented by all operators of more than 50 acres of cropland in the Bay watershed and also landowners of land in the Bay watershed of which 20 or more cows are pastured must then install and maintain stream exclusion practices. So again, this would be effective July 1 of 2026. The, the, the bill has passed and is law but the implementations regarding the nutrient management plan requirement and the mandatory livestock stream exclusion would apply um, if we have not met our goals. So our hope is that we continue to move forward in a voluntary uh, fashion. And as you know, the nutrient management plans as well as the livestock stream inclusion are, are a very important part of the program that this board oversees. There's a very important short term, a couple short term requirements. One is establishment of a stakeholder, excuse me, stakeholder advisory group to develop a process to assist producers with attaining nutrient management plans and stream exclusion practices, including funding needs and obstacles to implementing these important best management practices. And then no later than July 1, 2020, a portable stream fencing practice must be included in the VACS program. And so that will be something that you will be hearing more about, Mr. Chairman, in the coming year because we have until July of next year to develop. Um, and our staff is already researching such practices that will allow for portable stream fencing um, options um, and we'll be presenting those through the Ag BMP Technical Advisory Committee throughout this year. Um, and lastly, Mr. Chairman, the most important thing for this board to be aware of is that this legislation tasks this board with no later than December 31 of 2020, uh, you shall establish methodology for identifying perennial streams. And it's important that this method cannot require field verifications. Uh, I think all the board members were provided an email uh, from Secretary Strickler um, outlining some considerations that we should take into effect uh, regarding this process. I believe that was about a month ago or so. Um, so we will certainly be using the Secretary's guidance um, in, in this. And um, also related to this was the pilot project we did in Rockingham County where we used GIS um, imagery, satellite imagery to determine perennial streams. And so we're looking at how we might be able to, uh, to utilize that existing technology. Um, so uh, again, and the other thing to keep in mind is that con uh, considerable additional funding would be needed to expand the use of this methodology throughout the, the, the watershed. Um, but it is a possibility that we will be looking at if we can get some grant funding or to identify some other sources. So um, again, uh, this is gonna be a pretty heavy lift for this board between now and December 31, uh, but it is a specific requirement that the General Assembly has put on you. Um, and so therefore, obviously, discussions on this topic are covered by the emergency meeting requirements since this is required by statute. Um, I want to then shift gears on to talk about, uh, from legislation to talk specifically about budget items. Um, first of all, um, the Commonwealth, well, I think you, you all know that we are facing a significant economic downturn in the Commonwealth and in the country. Um, the current forecast is for at least a billion dollars in revenue shortfall in the current fiscal year that ends this June 30th. And then uh, and that number just sort of rolls forward because one billion this year goes into the base budget for next year, which means we start with a billion less in the forecast and then we already have a billion less 
So one billion becomes two billion, and then for the second year of the biennium, the effect becomes three billion. Um, just to give you some understanding of the enormity of this, um, the General Assembly will be coming back in special session later this year. I'm thinking somewhere uh, from what I've heard in the August time frame or so. Um, once the revenue situation becomes clearer um, to help to address this. Um, so um, that I will talk in a minute more about uh, how that's going to impact what we're recommending to you today. But before I do that, I also want to uh, indicate to you that there's the government, the governor did some amendments to the reconvened session of the General Assembly back on April 22nd regarding unallocating certain funding that the General Assembly had provided in the budget that was passed during the regular session. And um, what that impact to you is specifically is there was uh, additional uh, $3.84 million deposited into the Virginia Natural Resources Commitment Fund this year that has now been put on hold. Um, in addition, there was $15 million that was to be deposited into the dam safety fund for district owned um, and department owned dam repair and upgrades. Um, and um, uh, so unfortunately that has been put on hold for now too, which that would have been something that you would have been uh, required to allocate. But until the General Assembly and the governor can get their hands around the um, uh, severity of the revenue shortfall, um, we, we will be holding on those particular things. Um, and as you will see in here later in the agenda, in the recommendations we are making to you, the department has been conservative in allocating funding for this year. Our theory is that um, if we allocate funds and the district center planning on that, it's a lot easier for us to come back and allocate additional funds if we have them later in the year. But if we don't, um, we um, we potentially would have to recall funds from that had been allocated to districts. And so to avoid that happening this year, um, first of all, let me just sort of run you through the budget steps that we're going to be uh, talking about more specific, specifically in the, in the important decisions that this board has to uh, consider today. But first of all, uh, we're recommending um, in the hope that further budget cuts will not be necessary for fiscal year 21, which begins July 1st, that administrative and operating funding for the districts remains stable and is the same as last year. From the cost year funding, cost year funding, we are only recommending today that you allocate $35 million of the fund of the funding available. Um, and that uh, staff will get into a little bit more detail, but in effect, we're going to be holding back a little bit of funding in the extent that we are not able to um, continue on this path uh, due to future budget reductions. Um, and um, what that hopefully will mean is that later on you will have additional funding that you would be able to allocate. But again, we have to be very conservative. Um, we are remaining at the 70-30 split between the Chesapeake Bay and outside the bay as required by the budget language. And as far as technical assistance funding, efforts to include stable base funding for technical assistance were finally successful in FY21. Uh, many of you know this is something that many of the folks on this board and, and, and our partners on the line here have been working on for over a decade. And so we were get, able to get the General Assembly to approve a base technical assistance funding of 4.55 um, out of the total of 5.85 million. Again, that's 4.55 million that hopefully, if uh, the budget starts to get back on track, um, will continue, will then become part of the base operating funding for the districts. And that 4.55 million, Mr. Chairman, you might recall the uh, study that we did a couple years ago with the members of the General Assembly that recommended a base floor for the cost share program at 35 million. And so that 4.55 million is based on an appropriate percentage of the $35 million uh, floor that we uh, had recommended for the cost share program. So in this case, we have about an additional 1.3 or so above that um, based on the level of funding that we're going to be um, working about allocating. And um, also the recordation revenue, the recordation revenue continues to be appropriated at $10 million level. 
and out of the $10 million level, uh, $1.3 million, uh, the, that's the additional 1.3 I'm referring to that comes from the, uh, the anticipated recordation revenue. So, Mr. Chairman, I know that that's a lot of information. Uh, again, we do we are recording this, and uh, my uh, notes can be made part of the record as well. Um, and I, I know it's a little bit challenging to address questions, um, and I know that staff are monitoring chat if there are any other questions that anybody wants to type in the chat. I'm looking at that as well. But with that, Mr. Chairman, I will turn it back to you, sir. Uh, thank you much for, for a very comprehensive report. Are there any uh, questions from the board? Seen anything in the chat? Okay, I'm going to move on. Uh, next agenda item is... I have a question. This is Gray Coiner. Go ahead, Gray. I'm very sorry. I had some whatever problems. I thought I followed directions explicitly, but I could not get on to the GoToMeeting site. Uh, and I'm by phone now, so I apologize and won't interrupt any more and I can help. But uh, I did not get that report. Could I have a printed copy of it, ASA P, please? Yep, we can send it to you. Great, thank you. You want hard copy or electronic? Uh, electronic's fine. Okay, I can send it to you later today. Thank you very much. Welcome. Christine Claude, again, why don't you go ahead and, and send my written remarks out to all the board, and then again, we'll make it part of the record. Okay. Any other questions? All right, moving on. Uh, next agenda item is approval of projects funded by the Dam Safety, Flood Prevention, and Prevention Protection. Oh, I'm sorry, Adam. I jumped right you, you over you. Me check. Uh, okay, thank you. Excuse me, Adam. <laughs> That's right. It's Adam, my turn. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, can everybody hear me okay? I guess we can. We had a, uh, for our first electronic audit subcommittee meeting, uh, it went very well at nine o'clock this morning. Uh, we had some things to discuss. Uh, our previous, uh, from our previous meeting, the districts that had problems have really stepped up to the plate and made grand improvements, and we're really glad to see that. Um, as far as our reviews from these audits, we had uh, we're going to send out a general letter to all the districts uh, with some of the concerns and, and stuff that was found throughout the state. Uh, we only had one district that we're actually going to be sending a warning letter to, uh, and that was Mountain Castle, but. Uh, other than that, that's about all that we had this morning in our in our audit subcommittee report. Unless Christine or Michael has anything to add, that's all that I've got to report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Does anyone? Does the board have any questions for the audit subcommittee? Having none in the chat box, we will now move to the dam safety and flood management uh, approval of projects funded by dam safety, flood prevention, and, and protection assistance fund. Good morning, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. This is Wendy Howard Cooper. You all have the report in front of you. I will run through the um, the outcome of our grant application process and our recommendations to the board. And there is a motion at the end um, for action by the board. Our grant application process was opened in, in November of 2019. It closed um, February 28th of 2020. We received 91 applications totaling 1,128,101.48 in total project cost. The amount requested from the fund was $552,536.86. This was the first year that total projects requested did not um, exceed the amount of funding we had available. Of the $552,000 that was requested from the fund, 89,000 of, I'm sorry, 89 of those applications were for dam safety projects totaling $452,000. 264 and two of those projects were for flood prevention and protection assistance totaling 100,272.86. 
There is a chart included in the report that tells you the regions where these projects were located. Um, I believe that you all are familiar with our dam safety region, so I won't go through all of that. Um, but again, 89 dam safety, two flood prevention projects, 91 total projects. There were no appropriated projects this year. Um, so that is why that um, chart is blank. On the next page, there is a list of all the projects that we received, the amount of funding that they requested, any reductions that were applied to those requests, as well as the explanation for why those funds were reduced. And that is both for the dam safety and the flood prevention section. There is also a list of projects that were denied and the reasons for those denials. Out of all the projects that we received, we denied uh, a total of $144,477.86, five projects, four of which were dam safety, one of which was flood prevention and protection. Are there any questions on the information that I've gone over any part already or if you need explanation for anything? Any questions? A motion is written. This is Gray Coiner. A motion is written in the uh, presentation. Yes. It's, it's my understanding that the board will read the motion. Gray, I'll read the motion. Thank you. Virginia Soil and Water Conservation Board approves the 86 grant applications with an approved amount of $308,168 as recommended by the department. Approval of this grant is conditioned on the following. All grants are made on the reimbursement basis and will be governed by a grant application developed in consultation with the Virginia Resource Authority. All applications will be given a period of 90 days to enter into a grant agreement following the agreement being sent. The Department of Conservation and Recreation is authorized to further extend this date in its discretion and following consultation with VRA. All grant agreements will require that projects be completed within 12 months of the date of the execution of the agreement upon receipt of a written request for a project extension with specific completion dates by the grantee to the department with a copy to VRA. The department is authorized to consider such requests and may amend the terms of the agreement and allow a specific, specified extension upon the department's and the authority's written approval. Extension requests must be received by the department no later than 90 days prior to the expiration of the original agreement or grant funds are subject to rescission and the department's at the department's discretion. No extension shall exceed an additional year without specific grant approval. In the event that any of the above applications fail to execute a grant agreement with VRA within 90 days of such agreement being sent to the application, the department in consultation with VRA is authorized to rescind those grant funds and allocate in subsequent grant rounds. The department is authorized to communicate this approval to the VRA so that VRA's review of applications may proceed. The department is also authorized to take any action necessary to proceed with the closing and administration of grants subsequent to VRA's approval of the application. Is there a move? Well, does somebody move the motion? Pointer moved. I have a second. Wilson, second. Uh, Motion's been moved and seconded. We will now take a roll call. If you approve, say yes. Not approved, no. Mr. Arneson? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Saki Blanc? Yes. Warner? Yes. Ms. Mabry? Yes. Mr. Newton? Yes. yes. Dr. O'Brien? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Chairman, the motion carries. Okay. Next item is the Lake Barcroft Watershed Improvement District budget. 
Hello, everybody. Um, you all, this board takes up this um, agenda item every year to summarize. Lake Barcraft Cross anticipates a balance of one million thirty-four, one million thirty-four thousand four hundred thirteen dollars distributed among four reserve funds: one for operations, one for dredging and silt disposal, general capital, and then dam renovation. They expect to collect property taxes of $1,252,600 this year. It's a increase over FY2020, but is within the inflation rate expected by the community. And, identif and there are some other modest income sources, approximately $2,500 for available funds. Their planned FY21 budget expenditures are of one million seventy three thousand six hundred and fifty four dollars. They include the following breakout seven hundred seventy six thousand two hundred dollars for operating expenditures, including personnel, administration, overhead, environmental maintenance, and equipment. Four hundred seventy five thousand for dam renovation projects, including replacement of gate side seals, additional stormwater management to address erosion issues throughout the community and land acquisition for the necessary establishment of an access road and operational facility. 115,000 for dredging and silt removal and 47,500 for general capital expenses, expenditures, which include the biennial recertification of the dam. Like Barcroft is expecting an ending balance of $1,073,654 at the remainder of the year. Thank you. Are there any questions? Uh, the chair will entertain a motion to Lake Barcroft budget. Pointer, since it's short, I'll read it. <laughs> Virginia Soil and Water Conservation Board approves the Lake Barcroft Watershed Improvement District FY 2021 budget as submitted by the Northern Virginia Soil and Water Conservation District and presented by the department. Thank you. Is there Wilson, a second? second. We have a Motion and second. Is there no further discussion? We'll roll call. Mr. Arneson? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Ms. Saki Blunt? Yes. Mr. Pointer? Yes. Mr. Maybury? Ms. Maybury? Yes. Mr. Newton? Yes. Dr. O'Brien? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. yes. Chairman, the motion carries. Thank you very much. Next agenda item is approval of the board's fiscal year 2021 cost share, manual, D manual. DMP manual, the approval of the manual. Do uh, you want to talk to that? I will totally talk to that. <laughs> <laughs> The board was actually mailed copies of this in preparation for the March board meeting that didn't happen. Um, there were some comments received from one of the board members and we sent something out probably about a month later responding to those comments. There have been some changes that were made um, that are reflected in the copies you were sent in preparation for this board meeting. Um, those changes were highlighted. Um, Overall, there are a couple of big things. I can talk about the guidelines and the um, glossary, and then if there are specific questions about the specs, let's handle those individually. Um, so key things for the guidelines, um, we're eliminating all individual practice caps. Participants will be eligible for a maximum participant cap that was established last year of $100,000. Um, the variance process has been expanded to include several other um, practices or combination of practices. CCR will begin allowing two-party checks, but only if those party checks are for lending institutions. We also have worked with the Virginia Resource Authority and DEQ to allow an assignment of excuse me, assignment of payment form for those producers who um, are granted loans from funds from DEQ's um, ag loan program. 
um, the assignment of payment form will allow the district to provide that cost share payment directly to DEQ. Um, a key result of the programmatic review that was conducted last fall, and you all were provided copies of the result at the December meeting, revol revolved around the bid process. There was um, significant differences in the way districts across the state um, implement the bid process. So one of those recommendations from the programmatic review was that the process be standardized and a little bit more consistent as well as a little bit have um, some more guidance about how it should be done. We have addressed that um, in this version of the manual. What now is in place is that for FY21, projects that have a component that is estimated to equal or exceed a billable expense of $30,000 will need to go through the bid process. So just the component, not the entire project, it's if that component. So for many practices, um, right now there was confusion about, well, if I have a livestock exclusion practice and the fencing didn't equal the $30,000, but the well did, what am I doing the bid process on? Is it just for the well or is it the entire process? So under the new language for FY21, the bid process will be on the well, not the entire process. Um, there is a little, um, we will work with districts to do um, a little bit behind the scenes in the tracking program. There will be a new status called conditionally approved pending bids, um, which will allow districts to send letters to producers acknowledging that as soon as the bids come through, that, that producer is eligible for those funds. So that should allow producers to um, guarantee to contractors that they will have the fund before the estimates are completed. Um, we have revised the extreme act of nature language for practices that have been damaged or destroyed by floods, hurricanes, tornadoes. Um, it's not substantially different, but it does allow um, still producers to have the opportunity to receive additional cost share um, funds to if the practice is fixed, although it does expand, start a new lifespan for that practice. And then the final thing, big item for the guidelines was actually a result of the drought that occurred last fall. Um, in the extreme act of, act of nature language as well. We've allowed districts a sort of a different option for um, determining if a drought is being experienced in their area. Under current rules, we're a little hampered for drought unless there's a, an official drought designation issued by the governor. What this will allow districts to do is designate at a huck level that there is a disaster if the disaster can be documented by a local credible source, such as an extension agent or AREC, and a professional recognized climatology expert. So that could be the Drought Monitor, State Climatology Office, or the Palmer Drought Severity Index. Um, it will still not allow early planning dates to be extended, and all performance criteria must still be met. Um, but since that was an issue that happened last fall, we wanted to be able to address it. Um, under the glossary, for agricultural production, and to try and clarify um, for equine operations, what are eligible for VAC, and this went through the tax, for purposes, we are adding the following language, for purposes of the VAC program, Commercial equine operations, such as breeding, boarding, and training facilities, are eligible for funding if they meet the necessary acreage and income requirement for each of the past five years. There has been inconsistency across the state um, in the implementation of this provision, specifically as it um, impacts equine operations, and we're trying to address that. The other item that affects more broadly 
that also went through the tax, although honestly, the vast majority of these did, especially the spec, was the definition of live stream or live water. Um, the intent of the definition really is to give district staff flexibility to help producers in the field. The definition is live stream or live water for the purposes of the agricultural Virginia Agricultural Cost Share Program only. A creek, stream, river, or other water feature which has surface flow or creates a surface flow for a substantial portion of the year. This will impact the vast majority of livestock stream exclusion practices and several others. Um, we actually have used this in guidance for the past year. So districts are already implementing this this way. Um, the last true definition change is for specialty crops, which will be defined for use across back specifications as vegetables, tree crops, perennial vine crops, ornamentals, or cultural crops, tobacco, hemp, turf, and other similar crops. So those are sort of the big picture, true programmatic changes. Um, and I don't know if there are questions about that or if there are specific questions about specifications or not. Are there any questions for staff? Coiner, Christine, a statement you made early in your presentation, I may have misheard it, okay. but you said that all caps were removed, but uh, there are still caps in place specific for specific projects, and I wanted to make that clear. So the Participant caps is still in place, but the practice caps are not. Well, there are, like, uh, I think there's a monetary on, oh, uh, I, I know I saw it. Uh, cost share, what, what is it, for planting? There's a, there's a, anyway, I think to cover yourself, there are a couple that are still in place according to what you redlined in. Okay. Yes, it wouldn't be necessary to have variances if all practice caps were removed. No, you would need the variance to address the participant cap. So you still, participants are still limited, at least at the VAX level. Districts have the flexibility to have lower caps. At the VAX level, Participants are limited to $100,000. So if you were doing a litter shed and a composter, and that's going to cost you more than $100,000, you need to go through the variance process. That's really the reason for the variance. Are there other questions? The motions, I, go ahead. I'd, I'd be willing to make the motion that the Virginia Soil and Water Conservation Board approves the 2021 Virginia Agricultural Cost Share BMP manual as presented. The department is authorized to make non-substantive changes to include formatting and stylistic changes as necessary to all approved sections of the manual. Thank you. Do I have a Coiner, second. Any further discussion? We'll take a roll call. Mr. Arnison. Yes. Mr. Wilson. Yes. Ms. Saki Blanc. Yes. Pointer. Yes. Mabry. Yes. Mr. Newton. Yes. Dr. O'Brien. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. Motion carries. Motion carries. Yeah. All right. The next agenda item is approval of desktop procedures for district fiscal operations. This draft, there was a draft that we sent out to admin staff for review on April 20th. Let me back up for a second. Um, for this really is the um, guide that the auditors use when they are reviewing districts um, 
performance. This is sort of the minimum standard that the department, the auditors expect um, the districts to adhere to when it comes to financial and some administrative processes. Um, it is sort of a, an evolving document. Um, it is changed typically after every audit or every two um, to address the findings that were in the found during the audit cycle. Um, this draft was sent to the district admin staff review on April 21st. We requested comments back from May, by May 4th, although we received some late and did address comments we could. Um, we received comments from two districts. DCR administrative staff, including CDCs and others, had also commented on this, and most of their comments were incorporated and revisions occurred. Um, so many of the updates are from a collection of suggestions and edits through the audit. Um, there are some minor formatting changes and updates to all the website links in the handbook. Um, many of these recommendations the board actually saw last May. Um, there were two versions of the desktop guide that went to the board last May. One incorporated changes that were the board had seen previously, but the other version incorporated recommendations from our newly hired grant manager. And while the board did not feel comfortable adopting all the changes recommended by a grant man manager, those are what we started with this year. The language has been edited to reflect the results of this year's audit. Specifically, language has been included related to the payment of sales tax and how you go through that process with the Department of Tax. Language has been amended to reflect statutory changes such as FOIA requirements, the local official training requirements, and the need to develop and approve committee meetings. Revisions were made to reflect our actual audit process, but it does not change the requirements for districts. Clarifying language has been added in many places, and we have tried where possible to remove duplicative language. One of the biggest changes really is the requirement for a district to adopt a policy related to gift cards. We continually have questions. It's continually a conversation with audit, the auditors. Um, we did say in there that you need to address certain policy questions. That does not necessarily mean that the department has an answer about how you should or a preference for how you address those, just that you do. And then you adhere to your policy. Um, those are the big things. I don't know if there are questions. Um, Any questions for staff? All right, the motion states the Virginia Soil and Water Conservation Board approves the desktop procedures for district fiscal operations as presented by the department. The department is authorized to make non-substantive changes to include formatting and stylistic changes as necessary to the guide. Do I have a movement, a motion? Coiner. Thank you, Will a second. second. Uh, any other dis further discussion? Ask Michael, call the roll. Mr. Arneson? Yes. Mr. Wilson? Yes. Becky Blunk? Yes. Pointer? Yes. Ms. Mayberry? Yes. Mr. Newton? Yes. Dr. Ryan? Yes. Ms. Smith? Yes. Yes. Chairman, the motion carries. Thank you. The next agenda item is the approval of the board policy on soil and water conservation district administration and operating funds allocated for fiscal year 2021. This is the allocation that uh, uh, Clyde spoke of earlier. Is there any? So this is the same amount of funding was provided in FY21 as was provided in FY2020. Therefore, the allocations remain the same. Um, this is an FYI, 
was provided to continue the efforts for the remote dam monitoring equipment. We have simplified some of the training requirements for um, the department, more the language and to allow us a little bit more flexibility um, in what trainings were provided based on priorities established for districts or that we think um, admin staff may need. It also gives us a little bit more flexibility for the truly critical to do the truly critical trainings given the current budget situation. We have included additional language regarding the, re the time frame for the repayment of funds due to budget reductions. That is existing language in a grant agreement. Um, that requires districts to repay funds if we unfortunately, and I hope we don't ever have to get there. Um, I just wanted the language to mirror each other in both the grant agreement and the um, policy. We remove reference to the development of budget-based needs assessment as that's truly dependent on funding being provided for admin and ops. And those are the big changes in the policy. Are there any questions for staff? Motion is simply to approve the changes to the operating policy. Is that correct? Yeah, approve the policy on soil and water. All right. Wilson approved. Do I have a second? Second, Coiner. Will you take the roll? Mr. Arneson. Yes. Mr. Wilson. Yes. Saki Blunt. Yes. Pointer. Yes. Ms. Mayberry. Yes. Mr. Newton. Yes. Dr. O'Brien. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. Yeah. Mr. Chairman, the motion carries. Thank you. The next agenda item is the. Um, Approval of the Administration and Operations Grant Agreement. Again, this is similar to FY 2020. There are a couple changes, though, in the grant deliverables. Based on an alloc the Allocation Subcommittee's recommendation and a board motion approved in December, the completion of the budget template will now become a two-year grant deliverable. Um, we will provide the budget template in the early spring. It is the plan that the department will work with the peer review committee to ensure all necessary components to determine funding needs are included in the next version of this budget template. And it is our hope that we will be able to work with the association to provide training opportunities on the template next spring at the next admin and ops training event. Um, we have removed the requirement to provide CDCs with certain personnel records. On the grant deliverable regarding um, audit, we've also included language to address failing grant deliverable assessment. And I don't really mean failing, but failure to meet um, as part of the grant agreement. It's just been added for clarity. The audit subcommittee has been handling this as part of um, their charge um, for a while now. We have revised the requirement for new directors to receive new director orientation and recognition of the public health emergency. New directors will now have until December 31st of this year to receive both parts of director orientation. It is our hope that um, later this fall we'll be able to have other additional phase part one and um, if necessary part two training for those directors. We have removed the requirement for district director attendance at annual meeting and spring meetings this year in recognition of the public health emergency. Um, it is my understanding that the association was okay with the removal this year but may want to discuss further next year when things are more have a more normal um, able to have more normal meetings and conferences. We've removed the requirement for directors to take Sequoia training. It's law now and it's the director's responsibility and the department no longer tracks. Some, we have also revised the requirement related to FOIA officers. 
Um, FOIA officers must now take the training when they are first become a FOIA officer, and then as the department provides it. Thank you. Are there any questions for staff? Uh, the motion states the Virginia Soil and Water Conservation Board approves the Department of Conservation and Recreation and Virginia Soil and Water Conservation District Administration and Operational Support Grant Agreement, fiscal year 2021. Who? <laughs> I got two. Yeah, it, let Coiner be the mover, and I'll, I'll second Newton. Okay. Well, the motion is moved and seconded. Is there any further discussion? Michael, will you call the roll? Mr. Arneson. Yes. Mr. Wilson. Yes. Becky Blunk. Yes. Coiner. Yes. Ms. Mayberry. Yes. Mr. Newton. Yes. Dr. O'Brien. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. Mr. Chairman, the motion carries. Okay. Thank you. Next agenda item is the. Approval of the board policy on soil and water conservation district cost share and technical assistance funding allocation for fiscal year 2021. Okay. So as the director mentioned, the department is recommending a conservative approach, a total of $35 million for the VAX program with the maintained 70-30 split as required by budget language. It includes the 4.55 that was provided by the General Assembly for base technical assistance funding, which complements the recommendations from the allocation subcommittee and was approved by this board in December. This, the high priority watersheds and HUCs were determined using the new 2020 non-point source assessment. So there were some changes to priority HUCs. You can notice some areas change colors in the map that was provided. Language was revised to reflect changes to the VAX manual, including the list of priority practices and the practices eligible for variances. Other than that, truly not much change. Are there any questions for staff? I, I have a question for staff. This is Kristen Saki Blunk. Um, and this may, this may just be an artifact of um, my the way that I receive these documents, but I I I am the documents that I have in my folder here are all the draft final documents without the recommended motions. D did I miss another mailing that had the final documents with recommended motions in them? No, you didn't receive the recommended motions because at the time I didn't have a final budget to reference. So if okay. at this point we have, this is why the meeting was canceled on May 20th. Sure. Yeah. This, the motion references chapter 1289, the 2020 Acts of Assembly, item 373, as well as item 375.10, which puts certain funding provisions on hold. Um, the motion says, and I did forget to add one thing. The Virginia Soil and Water Conservation Board approves the Department of Conservation. Oops, that's a grand agreement. Sorry. And, and please know, I'm not talking about just this item. I'm talking about the prior three items as well, that um, the documents being shown here are you know, more finalized documents than what I have before me. And I just wanted to make sure that I wasn't overlooking the availability of the final document with the recommended motion. Uh, let me just say that, uh, Kristen, we, we ask for the final document with the changes so that the board members can go through and see where the, the changes are. And so all the pertinent changes in the document you have, you should have in front of you, has all the changes changes in red so that you can easily find out what has come in and taken out. And then, of course, we didn't have it the time to get the motion out. Okay? 
Yeah, I appreciate that. But I do, um, I, just as a newer member of this board, it would be really helpful to have seen what the motions being asked for would be. And I recognize that some of this is cyclical and that, um, you know, that it, it's an annual re-up, but I just was concerned that I didn't know what motions we were being asked to actually take this morning until hearing it here. Okay, yeah. Well, I'm seeing it for the first time too. In fact, I don't see it right now. It's going to be this, except you approve the policy. Okay. The Virginia Soil and Water Conservation Board approves the policy and procedures on soil and water conservation district cost share and technical assistance funding allocations for fiscal year FY 2021. Additionally, Three Rivers has requested that they be allowed to supplement some of their VAC funding with the funding that was provided for the whole farm approach pilot project if they need it. That is the motion, Joel. Pointer. I have a second. Wilson. Is there any further discussion or clarification from the board? I, I just say I had similar uh, concerns expressed by Ms. Saki Blunt, and uh, I hope that in the future we may be able to have a little bit more info in advance of the uh, meeting. Yes, thank you. Uh, we get back to normal. <laughs> right. Uh, it's Michael to call the roll. Mr. Arneson. Yes. Mr. Wilson. Yes. Jackie Blunk. Yes. Pointer. Yes. Avery. Yes. Newton. Yes. Dr. O'Brien. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. Yes. Chairman, the motion carries. Thank you. The next item is, is in the same uh, format as the previous ones with, without a motion in your packet. Uh, it is for the approval of the cost share and technical assistance grant agreement. This is, again, very similar to this year's grant agreement. We have changed some deliverables, mostly as a result of the programmatic reviews that were conducted late last fall. Um, those programmatic reviews really were done to um, the question had been asked about VACs being implemented in accordance with the guidance that's been provided by this board. Um, so some of those deliverables have been revised to more accurately reflect that. There is a deliverable that um, assesses the districts on their implementation of VACs in accordance with the BMP manual. It more closely ties implementing VACs to the guidance in the manual. Um, one of the specific things in the programmatic review was related to um, engineering job approval authority and how to make that more consistent across the state and ensure that all of the guidance and procedures that um, are in place are being followed. Um, there have been several issues related to this, either practices not designed as according to standards or in some instances, district employees unknowingly exceeding their authority. Um, fixing those practices, those structural practices, if they're not designed correctly, the producer's money and the district's money costs time and energy for district employees and the department staff to fix and can reduce the likelihood of a producer implementing additional practices. We've also added the administrative reviews that are conducted by CDCs each year. In many instances, it just ensures that adequate record keeping are, are in the files, that documents are signed. Um, it helps districts prepare for the audits and this ensures districts are following guidelines. Um, we've also referenced the bid process 
Um, hopefully with the revised guidance in the manual, it will become more consistent across the state. And again, it enacts the recommendations for the programmatic review. We've also revised the standards for secondary considerations this year, knowing that boards were unable to meet um, in some instances. So we've changed the language. Prior to approving any cost share applications, districts must either have submitted secondary considerations to the department and received approval, or inform the department that they will use the approved considerations for FY 2020. The standard here really is prior to approving any cost share applications. That really is what districts will be assessed at. We've added the requirement to ensure that data is entered into the tracking module within 15 days after the end of every quarter to accurately reflect board approvals, cancellations, carryovers, and participant funding requests. We are, department gets more and more information requests about how much funding districts have obligated, as well as what those funding needs for the future are. And it's critical for the department to have this information in a timely manner. Those are the key changes to the grant. Okay. And the motion is for this board to approve the grant agreement for 2021. Uh, is there any further questions for staff? If not, do I hear a motion? This Coiner. Is Kristen. Go ahead. In a second. Kristen Saki Blank, second. Thank you. Michael, will you call the roll? Mr. Arneson. Yes. Mr. Wilson. Yes. Mr. Saki Blank. Yes. Pointer. Yes. Avery. Yes. Newton. Yes. Dr. O'Brien. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. Chairman, the motion carries. Thank you. This next motion, uh, the chair will recuse himself and ask Adam Wilson to chair uh, the approval of redistribution of funds for approved projects funded by the Soil Mark Conservation District Dam Maintenance and Repair Rehabilitation Program. Adam, take over, please. <laughs> okay, who's going to talk about this? Christine? <laughs> So it's actually pretty easy. Um, there are 10 projects at Piedmont Soil and Water Conservation District for dam repairs. Um, they are requesting, as well as the department, that funding be transferred from construction to engineering. Um, Piedmont will actually be provided cost savings to complete all the design work at once under the term contract that many districts have signed on to for dam repair. It also will provide better co construction cost estimate for future needs, which will allow the department and the board to um, make better estimates of how they allocate funding out of that fund um, for future projects. Um, the overall level of funding provided to the district remains the same at this time. Um, so, I don't know if there are questions. Um, they're asking to approve the transfer of $30,000 to cover all the engineering costs. Okay, is there any further questions from staff or board members? I'll read the recommended motion. The Virginia Soil and Water Conservation Board approves the redistribution of funding for the following project at Piedmont Soil and Water Conservation District. Uh, I'll say SDR one time, 1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903-1903, 1903
second, O'Brien. Okay. Michael, will you call the roll? Mr. Arneson. Abstain. Mr. Wilson. Yes. Becky Blunk. Yes. Warner. Yes. Mayberry. Yes. Mr. Newton. Yes. Dr. O'Brien. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. The motion carries with Mr. Arneson abstaining. Okay, motion hey. carries. Mr. Thank Chairman, you, I'll turn the meeting. I'll turn the meeting back over to you, Mr. Chairman. Okay. Um, the next is the uh, Soil and Water Conservation District Director appointments and resignations. You you have them in there. Um, we're going to do two motions because one member of our, our board is uh, taking a different uh, moving, a different position. So. Uh, if you look at the uh, you look at the appointments, and then of course the recommendation of uh, the 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 motion is for the board to approve the appointments of the individual recommended. The first motion is for everyone on your list, with the exception of Adam Wilson at Holston River. So that is the motion. Do I have that moved? Pointer. I have a second. Newton Wilson. All right. Is there any uh, questions or further discussion? If not, I'll ask Charles call the roll. Mr. Arneson. Yes. Mr. Wilson. Yes. Jackie Blunt. Yes. Pointer. Yes. Mayberry. Yes. Mr. Newton. Yes. Dr. O'Brien. Yes. Ms. Smith. Yes. Uh, the motion carries. And the second motion is that this this board approve the appointment of Adam Wilson as director at Holston River. There, and do I have a mo motion? So moved. No so moved. No moved. No moved. We get a second. We did. Do I have a second? Second, Stacky Blunk. Thank you. No further discussion. We will call the roll, please. Mr. Arneson. Yes. Mr. Wilson. Abstain. Stacky Blunk. Yes. Pointer. Yes. Mayberry. Yes. Mr. Newton. Yes. Dr. O'Brien. Yes. Mr. Smith. Yes. Chairman, the motion carries. Thank you very much. Well, we're getting down to the end there, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the next motion is the uh, Virginia Soil and Water Conservation Board members acceptance. And this is merely uh, the we accept the nominations as made by the Virginia Association of Soil and Water Conservation Districts and the other partners that were involved, the Virginia Agribusiness Council and uh, Virginia Farm Bureau. Uh, the two of the current members on 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 this uh, recommendation, what happens is the, the, air, the districts come up with two names. We have to submit two names to the governor and the governor gets his choice, or his or her choice, uh, currently his choice. Uh, so, uh, because uh, Cindy and Gray are being recommended for a second term, I'm going to ask them to, can I ask them both to abstain and we take a vote or do we? That's fine. If, if, if there's no objection, the, the chair would uh, request the uh, interested parties to abstain and, and the motion that would be put forward is that the Soil and Water Conservation Board accepts the nominations of the Virginia Association of Soil and Water Conservation Districts and directs staff to forward these nominations to the Secretary of the Commonwealth for consideration for appointment. Wilson approved. I have a second. Mr. Newton, second. 
Is there any further discussion? Everybody understands what we're doing now. We're, we're asking to send these names up to the governor with the interested parties not, not, not voting for themselves. <laughs> Although I would object to that. I'd always vote for myself. <laughs> would you call the, <laughs> call the roll, please? Mr. Artisan. Yes. Mr. Wilson. Yes. Saki Blunt. Yes. Pointer. Abstain. Mayberry. Yes. Newton. Yes. Dr. O'Brien. Yes. And Ms. Smith. Abstain. Abstain. The motion carries with Mr. Coiner and Ms. Smith abstaining. Thank you very much. We have come to the uh, point of the agenda that is for public comment. Before we do that and look at the chat box, I, I would like to know if anybody uh, on the board has any general comments uh, that they would like to make today. I'll, the floor will open it to the board members for comments. Pointer. I hope that the new newer board members uh, realize that, uh, and I'm sure that they do, that Robert's Rules of Orders require that there be a motion before there's discussion on most of these issues, and I'm very prompt to put it forward as a motion. Please don't think that I like my name and lights are on paper. That's not the reasoning. It's just to keep this thing moving. So if I've intimidated you, I apologize. Please jump in in the future. Thank you. Thank you, Gray. <laughs> uh, Kristen Sacky Blunk here. Uh, you've just motivated me to try to unmute myself quicker. So thank you. Um, <laughs> I do have a comments and I want to just say one thank you so much to the for making this meeting possible um, virtually I know that that's not a small undertaking for this size board um, I would like to and because it's highly likely I think that this could happen into the future at different times um, I'd like to just strongly encourage um, us to try to adopt some new practices for how this um, the information is uh, presented and um, aligned with the agenda I, I think these are these are just housekeeping tasks but um, however you'd like to receive it I think that there have been a couple of important comments in the um, in the chat about the uh, availability of the final documents to the broader public and the district the soil water conservation districts as well as the board members um, it's been really challenging to um, toggle between um, the electronic copies of these um, of each item as it has come up and I think it's gonna be really important to number them so that they are firmly connected to the agenda item as the agenda is is brought up and it's going to be really important I think for staff to uh, reference what pages they're referring to and um, again this may be just my need as a new board member but I think there are always going to be new board members Thank you. Thank you. A point well taken. Uh, we're, we're all trying to figure it out, and, and we have no way to go but up and do it better. As Kristen, I will say, this is Coiner, I will say that if you look at my hard copies, uh, which were sent by Michael, uh, they have, I think, three different nomenclatures and every different to, to fit the revised agenda. So I appreciate exactly what you're saying. Uh, page numbers are lacking in a lot of these and that would be helpful uh and and i agree with you wholeheartedly as much of this information as we can have in front of us beforehand the better and not the day before because as i think i've weighed it's about five pounds of material each time so thank you Mr. go ahead adam Okay, I just uh, this is Adam Wilson. I just like to thank our staff and uh, for getting all this put together. I think it went very well. Uh, even our subcommittee went very well. I know that's a humongous undertaking, and uh, especially for non-technology savvy people like myself uh, to get this accomplished. And uh, but uh, I'd also like to uh, welcome everyone again, and, and glad you visited Southwest Virginia today with me. <laughs> Thank you. Anyone else? Yes, uh, Chuck, I'd just like to 
add on to what Kristen said that we're so glad that at our regular in-person meetings that the staff has those notebooks already, you know, with all the agenda items flagged in order. And uh, it's gonna just, it's a little while to get used to how to organize better for these uh, electronic meetings, which certainly are likely to happen again. So thank thanks to the staff and uh, hopefully our next meeting will be even smoother. Thank you very much. Uh, I find it's like a lot of things in life. Uh, by the time I know how to do a job, I'm done. Uh, and uh, we'll get this right. And by the time we get it down perfect, we'll go back to in in per, in in per, in stage in, in, in person meetings. <laughs> in person meetings. Um, no more public comment. Mr. No. Mr. Chairman, this is Clyde. Can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. I would like this to, first of all, uh, last week I was on a meeting that included the staff from six other governor's offices and the mayor of Washington, D.C. And I will tell you, this meeting has gone so much smoother than that or some other meetings that I have been, uh, seen. We have been working hard to evolve these. And I think that having observed uh, what uh, the challenges other folks have faced. I think the staff did a fantastic job with this. Um, and I want to just point out that in our normal process, we send you all uh, the documents ahead of time and we have to prepare, prepare them and provide them uh, to you. And in some cases, there are some minor tweaks that are made to that. I think staff did a good job of trying to point those out. Um, as you all can tell, this is voluminous. And you might recall and this was a recommendation that came from the board from years ago. When you have your normal in-person meeting, you might recall you have a brand new fresh notebook in front of you that includes numerous tabs that have the document behind it so that folks can follow along. And I acknowledge that not having that, have, not having that real hard notebook in front of me has been a challenge for me too. Um, so we certainly appreciate all your suggestions, um, but I can assure you all that any substantive change to anything that you were sent previously, uh, I believe was discussed by staff. And I believe that the majority of the changes to what you saw was the fact that the motion was added. And, and the reason that motion was added is that we did not have the chapter number because the governor had not signed the budget at the time the documents went out. Um, and again, if there were any uh, substan other substantive changes in what you were provided ahead of time to what was reviewed today, um, uh, uh, I hope that they were adequately uh, just uh, reviewed by staff and to the extent they weren't, we certainly will make sure that those are all a public a matter of the public record. And we have definitely uh, learned from this today and we'll continue to, uh, to tweak this. Uh, so, um, but I, I do very much so appreciate uh, all of your um, joining in today. And I really wanna recognize the hard work staff have done. This has not been easy. Uh, some of you may, know this, but we were not even allowed to go to our offices again today because of concern for safety um, downtown. Um, we So we have not been able to be in our offices. So when you're working with all these voluminous documents um, and you, know, you don't have your tools available to you, it just makes it that much harder. So I really appreciate all the efforts that our staff have taken to make this go as smoothly as it did today. Thank you. Any, any other comments? All right, the next meeting, uh, we really don't know the, what the September meeting, uh, where and what it'll be, and whether it'll be virtual or anything. It, it's up in the air, but uh, watch your emails and we'll get notification out. December, we are still, we are planning to go to Hotel Roanoke in conjunction with the association. And I wanna just shout out Kendall Tyree, who was an excellent host we moved this meeting at about noon yesterday from downtown out here to beautiful downtown Mechanicsville, a place I've never been. <laughs> and and uh, Kendall has very graciously assisted us and, and monitored the chat box. Thank Christine and Michael for keeping everything flowing and, and keeping me on track. Uh, 
Uh, that is my closing comments. And unless anybody else has a comment, I'm going to close this meeting. Mr. Chairman, you did offer public comment, and we did have board comment, but I don't know that we offered public comment. Well, yeah, yeah. the public comments are to come in on the uh, chat. And uh, hmm? any public comment in your chat box has been addressed. Yeah, right? all public what? comment in the chat box has been addressed as of this time. Thank you. Okay. Anything else for the good of the order? This meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you.